we've got Juanita Hall, after initial direct contract experience which lasted four hours, turned her world upside down. When I, Juanita became aware she had other children than those that she'd raised. Apart from activating her galactic self, the direct contact had unveiled other hidden things that she had no recall of previously regarding hybrid children. Thank you, Juanita, and welcome. Hi, everyone. You'll just have to bear with me. I'm quite nervous talking about this in public. Um, my initial contact experience happened uh, around four or five years ago, beginning of 2013, whatever year we're in now, I get confused. Um, and it, as, as Mary said, it lasted about four hours. And I'll just briefly go through that as a lead up to the other stuff that's happened. Um, I'm a parent of three children. I'm a grandmother. At the time, I was uh, working doing a, accounts for a building company. Um, I'd never really knew anything about um, our galactic heritage, ETs, anything like that. I'd watched the movie ET and I did love that and it did make me cry. Um, but it never triggered anything and I never had any awareness of anything outside a very normal life really. And this particular evening, I, I woke up and I was bolt upright, wide awake at uh, two o'clock in the morning. And I looked over at my partner and he was snoring quite heavily in the bed next to me. Um, which isn't unusual, but what might be more unusual is that when I then got up, he didn't move. He just continued to snore very heavily next to me. And I had a teenage daughter, I thought, oh, I'll go down and make sure she's home. Yes, she was in bed, sound asleep. I'm thinking, what am I going to do with myself? I felt weird. I felt um, a little bit goose fleshy and I felt a vibration that I didn't really understand and I wasn't sure what it was. And I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll just go downstairs and, and I'll sit and maybe I'll try and do a bit of meditation or something. So I've gone down to the lounge room. Uh, we're on a property that's quite um, isolated and private, right in the foothills of the Blue Mountains, with a river running alongside. Um, so there wasn't any other houses or anything around. We had the big picture glass windows all the way around. So anyway, I sit down on the lounge and I just shut my eyes and I take a breath and then I take another breath and every breath I took, my, vi my body was vibrating more and more. Anyway, I suddenly become aware with the, probably about the third or fourth breath that uh, uh, the light had gone on and I thought, oh, someone's awake and I've opened my eyes and I'm still sitting in the pitch dark. No one had turned the light on. The light had gone on above my head. And, but, but when I opened my eyes, I could see sparkles everywhere. And I thought, oh, that's weird. I can't really see a light, but I can see lots of sparkles. And I thought, must have imagined the light. So I shut my eyes again. There's the light. And I, felt or knew that I was in this column of very bright white light. And then I, that's when I become aware of spinning lights on the ceiling. And um, I think like other people have spoken about, at no time did I have any fear. The, like other people have mentioned that this flood of overwhelming love comes over you. And as a hand, I felt a hand on my shoulder and, and I wasn't even afraid to look, yet I knew that no one, like that it wasn't going to be a person. I, I, I looked around and there was a very, very tall being of light standing next to me, which um, I recognised immediately and began to cry because I thought, and the thought that accompanied that was, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, I, I can't believe I forgot you. Oh. 
Anyway, as this sort of all happened, then these other three very tall beings appeared in the room as well. And simultaneously, my arms began to just float up on their own and create these amazing sort of shapes. And it was sort of slow motion what was happening, but it was very obvious to me that, that um, I knew exactly what my hands were doing, even though I wasn't controlling my hands in any way, and that um, they were communicating with me via these, this hand language, I'll call it, and also telepathically. And that um, they were definitely family, and I was very, very familiar with them. And uh, not long after that, or, or all sort of within a sequence of time, and like I say, this did span over a four hour time period, um, I felt myself semi lifted up. Uh, I think like someone else had said this sort of, I realized it was some sort of tunnel and so I didn't see, but I'm presuming I was taken up into a craft, although on the evening that wasn't even in my comprehension. Um, my head began to be tilted back, not painfully, forcefully, but it was tilted back. My mouth was opened and a beam was shot down about into my stomach area. And like I say, the whole time my hands are still doing these things, I'm feeling very relaxed, I'm feeling this overwhelming love. Um, so even when I was getting pulled and prodded and pushed and pulled, I still had no fear. At any time did I have any fear. Um, and it was this feeling of that I'd already agreed to this. I'd agreed to this and I'd just forgotten. Um, and like I said, it wasn't anything I'd initiated. I knew nothing of extraterrestrials or star beings or galactics or anything like that. It just happened. Um, at some point, some things were really uncomfortable and as soon as I indicated that that was hurting, that particular movement would ease up. Like if my head was going too far back or my jaw was being pulled open too far. But I got the, um, there was all sorts of lights and things happening and lots and lots of sensation. Most of the time I had tears streaming down my face. My clothes were quite wet at the end of the experience. Um, not from pain, discomfort or anything else, but just from this overwhelming love. And this feeling that, how, how could I have forgotten this? How could I have forgotten this? Um, anyway, that experience went on for about four hours. It started to ease off and complete just as the sun came up. And I just sort of sat there stunned. I sort of realised I was sort of on the lounge and I opened my eyes and I'm looking around. I was just sort of sitting there stunned. I couldn't really move. I didn't know really what had happened. Um, and I, I just had this terrible thirst. I was so, so thirsty. So I tried to get up off the chair and I had um, it was like my legs had, weren't kind of solid anymore. And I thought, I need to go outside and go and sit down by the river. I, ne I just need to be outside. I need to be on the ground, on the earth. So I went out towards the sliding door at the back. And I'm trying to open the sliding door. And I couldn't make my hands hang on to the handle, it took me a lot of effort to get the door open. So the four hour thing had um, shifted all my energy fields and um, I believe now had um, activated 
day and night. Um, so, so everything was different. I went outside, I sat down. I, I'm still in this altered, stunned state. My vision was um, really, I, I couldn't focus on anything clearly. Everything looked like it was through, I was looking underwater with sparkles everywhere. And I went outside and I sat down. And it, like I said, it was, this was dawn, so the, there's a lot of birds around where we live, or we lived at that time, and, and so they're all waking up, and I'm sort of sitting there huddled in my blankie and still like, what just happened? And all these birds started to come down and land around me. And they were gibbering at me like I knew what they were saying. I didn't know what they were saying, but they were all like going, they're all just standing there going, and there was probably six of them, I guess, like tweeting at me and looking at me like I should know what they were saying. And they would actually let me touch them. Uh, it was the strangest thing. Um, and then it probably wasn't all that long after that that Paul obviously woke up and, and realised I wasn't around or, or whatever. And I, and I said, something's happened. So, something happened to me. And I didn't have words even to know how to explain that to Paul. And I guess at that time especially, he was so removed from any of that that <laughs> I think he already thought I had two heads with just some of the other stuff I did. So um, anyway, all this happened. Everything changed. I could no longer be near televisions. I couldn't be near radios. I, I, I still can't. I couldn't go, I, I, I struggle with shopping centres or anything like that. I need to go when there's no people around. Um, everything I eat changed. I had all this knowledge that I never had before and I don't know where I know it from. Um, I can only be around certain people and other people's energies I just find too discordant. Um, and. It was made clear to me by all the previous things that happened that that um, we all are capable of this state, and I guess that some of us have these interactions that are completely uninvited, but change everything in, so that we can change everything for everybody else. Now. The other bits which I have to quickly run through because I'm getting <laughs> time out. Um, probably about, um, oh, and when I looked at myself in the mirror, I could actually virtually see through myself for the first day or so after that event. Um, and um, I didn't need to sleep. I, I barely slept for about a week and I was not tired. I buzzed all the time. I didn't want to eat solid food, um, and it was just this constant thirst. And so they've given me a lot of information about water and food and everything else, which I won't get into. Probably about uh, a month later, same thing occurred. I woke up wide awake, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, I'll go downstairs. But it didn't feel the same. It didn't feel the same. It come outside, come and stand in the bang. It didn't feel the same. It did not feel the same, and I didn't go. I knew that if I went, I wouldn't see my children or my grandchildren again. I knew it. I knew that it was not the same energy. So yes, we have these amazing galactic family, which I think are actually ourselves come back to help us. And they, but, but not all the contact is actually good contact for us necessarily. There's elements there and so it's about them discerning. Discerning the energies and, and they're very they've made it very clear to me that that's what we need to learn to do. We need to learn to discern the energies and you know everyone's probably had a little bit of both at different times. So okay. <laughs> I've 
I've got one minute, I haven't even got onto the hybrids yet, but anyway, I guess the story's the stories and it'll unfold how it's meant to on the night. So um, it was after that night with the uncomfortable thing that I experienced um, uh, being having these really deep sleeps but waking up with nosebleeds. Um, and quite often as I'm waking up, I'm hearing children calling out to me. And one very, the very distinct one that woke me up and made me write all this stuff out was, uh, um, Mummy, Mummy, I Caillou's doing something. I'm not sure what I Caillou was doing. I'm thinking, who the hell's I Caillou? And then, then um, I had visions of things that weren't so pleasant. Um, and after that I contacted uh, Mary because I, I, I knew and I was distressed that I, there's two children somewhere, a boy and a girl, and they're not here. And I didn't give birth to them that I know of. What's going on? Like I, I, I needed to regain that memory, so I, I uh, contacted Mary. We had some amazing conversations. Uh, she did a regression, which then brought up uh, what had been going on on that side, which I don't think we've got time to get into. And I would love to share that with you, but I guess, like I say, what's meant to be on the night is what you end up talking about, I guess. Um, okay. So anyway, that's that's as much as we've got time for me to share with you this evening. But I really